Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling with like it like it is. Are we holding pure motives? Showing that we care. Are we teaching the truth in love? Jesus telling all that he had done to fulfill the good commandments. He knew every single one. Jesus said there's something that indeed he did lack. The Savior told the truth. He didn't hold the message back. He was teaching the truth in love. Showing that he cared, he was teaching the truth in love. A woman caught in evil and without an alibi, the truth so very obvious made no attempt to lie. With all the foes against her, how she felt so all alone. Till Jesus asked the people who would throw the first stone. He was teaching the truth in love. Telling it like it is. Like it is. While holding pure motives and joy. That he cared, he was teaching the truth in love. In love. In love. In love. Sometimes it's hard to know exactly how we are to share With the Master's words of confidence Directly do we dare Should we water down the message? Should we tell them only part? Will they see Him in our message? Will they see Him in our hearts? Are we teaching the truth? In love, telling it like it is. Like it is. Are we holding pure motives, showing that we care? Are we teaching the truth?
Soul Cafe Studio in South Florida, this is the Antidote to Deception radio program, enlightening the earth with God's truth. And now to the studio and today's word. Yes, friends, you're tuned into the Antidote to Deception internet radio program. I'm your host, the Word Master. On today's presentation and for the next few days, we'll be looking at the theme, Living in Victory. The first part of our study deals with loving our enemies. And before we begin, let us have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you for you doing only that which we know that only you can. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for answering our prayers. We pray in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. I want to thank you so much, dear listener for joining us today here on Antidote to Deception. Today, as we begin to delve into the series of living in victory, we want to start off with a hard one, loving your enemies. And to this end, to this end, we want to make sure that we have enough time to go over the information that's to be presented. So we're not going to delay too long, so we going to go into one song, then we're going to come back for a little bit, read our scripture, and then we'll head into the study for today. What have I done, Lord Jesus, to deserve your endless love? What have I done, Lord Jesus, to be worthy? of your grace what have I done Lord Jesus to be standing here with you what have I done Lord Jesus to be worthy of you for I am Matthew 5, from verse 43 up to 48, the Bible says, reading from the King James, You have heard that it has been said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that despise, do, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them 
who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and stands reign on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, a reward have you. Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Amen. And now we'll take another break and come back with our study for today on living in victory, part one, loving the enemies. Stay tuned. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description.
My words are not enough. He showed me how to love. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, as we begin this presentation, study in earnest. We ask the Lord God to teach us from your word exactly how you would have us to live in faith. Today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The following information is taken from the book Reflecting Christ, which we are seeking to do in this series under the February 37th reading, God's Law of Forgiving Love. And it says, which is part of a scripture reading, Love your enemies, Matthew 5, 44. The Savior's lesson, resist not him that is evil, was a hard thing for the revengeful Jews, that Jesus now made a still stronger declaration. Remember earlier on in the Sermon of Mount, chapter 5, which we're in, he said that. Now he goes on to say, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pay for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. So we see clearly and plainly that the love of God doesn't just extend to his friends, to his loved ones, it also goes to his enemies. It also reaches to those who do not love him. The Bible is clear. We love him because he first loved us. Romans 5 tells us that he died for us. It is clear that he died for us when we were not his enemies. And you know something, friends? This love is without a parallel. This love is without an equal. Because the Bible tells us, greater love has no man than a man laid down his life for his friend. But God commends his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Do you see the contrast, my friends? And that's why I often find myself saying, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Notice he goes on to say, Such was the spirit of the law which the rabbis had misinterpreted as a cold and rigid code of exactions. They regarded themselves as better than other men and as entitled to the special favor of God by virtue of their birth as Israelites. But Jesus pointed to the spirit of forgiven love as that which would give evidence that they were actuated by and higher by any high motives that they were that I apologize. But Jesus pointed to the spirit of forgiven love as that which would give evidence that they were actuated by any higher motives than even the publicans and sinners whom they despise. He pointed his hearers to the ruler of the universe under the new name our Father. He would have them understand how tenderly the heart of God yearns over them. He teaches that like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. Such a conception of God was never given to the world by any religion but that of the Bible. Heathenism teaches men to look upon the supreme being as an object of fear rather than of love. A malign deity to be appeased by sacrifice rather than a father pouring upon his children the gift of his love. Even the people of Israel had become so blinded to the precious teachings of the prophets concerning God that this revelation of his eternal love was an original object, an original subject, a new gift to the world. In fact, we read so many times in the Old Testament of the love of God to us as a father that to miss it, to miss out on that beautiful thought it's amazing that generations later that they could hear this and they have become so cold, so callous that this picture of God as a loving father bears no stay. Just like the heathens, the Jews of Christ's day have began to look on God as just another God to be appeased like all the other gods of all the other nations. He was not our father. Friend of mine, I want to let you in on this thought as we go forward. God does not tell us to do something that he is not himself ready, willing, and able to do. You think you got enemies? You think you got people conspiring against you 
whether at a job, in your school, whether in your own family status state. Friend of mine, think about God. Think about this, friends. The very first creature that was made, Lucifer, right here at the throne of God, the covering cherub, the bell. Friend of mine, think about this. The hatred and animosity that developed in Lucifer's heart towards the maker is appalling, yes, but it's unfathomable. Where did it come from? How did it get there? And why? And how could Lucifer nurture this? But all those questions pale in comparison to the fact that God, knowing all this would happen, still created Lucifer and gave him all the beauty of the universe. Again, Jesus, what a wonder you are. To our minds, these things seem uncomprehensible because in our finite existence, we can't see ourselves loving that point, loving persons so much, giving them chances after chances after chances. You may go and get by with one or two, but Jesus lets us know that love is unlimited. He says to his disciples and by extension us, as his last day disciples, if your brother sins against you X amount of times and X amount of times comes and asks forgiveness, just do it. Not so much for the other person's benefit, my friend, but for yours. Your sanity is salvation. See, a friend of mine, loving your enemies is indeed a hard thing. It's a hard saying. And that's why we would have a statement that it is more than just saying in a song, in a theme song. Show me how to love. In the true meaning, true meaning of the word. Teach me to sacrifice, expecting nothing in return. And he goes on to say that it has to be more and just words. Friend of mine, when the Bible tells us that God is love, it is not conveying a thought that God loves, that God has the attribute of being able to love. Oh no, my friend. The Bible is saying that God is the source. God is the embodiment of what love is. And so, who more than any other could understand the important principles of love? And that's why he tells us in the verses under consideration that we ought to love our enemies, bless them that persecute, pray for them that despite the use of persecute us. Early on in that chapter, it says, if your enemy fights you on the one who turns to him, the other also offer that other thing to him as well. A friend of mine, who does these things? Who is here being described in this most awesome chapter? Matthew, only a people who have been transformed by the good graces of your mighty God. And just like we don't know what we've done, deserve this love. Oh, friend of mine, it stands to reason, it stands to reason that we need to also understand that we need to be the conduit of this love as well. Every good thing we have, each ray of sunshine and shower of rain, every morsel of food, every moment of life, is a gift of love. Remember we just read that he sends his sun to shine on the good as well as the just as the unjust, and he makes even the rain fall on the just and the unjust. So, a friend of mine, you see how good God is? The same sun that brightens your day, that gives you warmth, the same sun that shining on your enemies, all from the love of God, the same rain that saturates your grounds and makes your plants and vegetation green and ripe for harvest. It does the same thing for your enemies, friends. That should tell you something. God is not impartial, and you should not be 
notice that the verse goes on to say that by doing these things, you become like your father. Friend of mine, you don't want to become like your original father, the devil. You don't want to have bitterness and hate in your heart. There's no good. There's a poison. You need to learn to let things go. Yes, it's a hard thing considering some of the things that people would have done to us. But you know what? The first thing was done to Jesus Christ, our Creator and our Savior. And you know what? He prayed, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Oh, my friends, are you willing to ask God to forgive your enemies for doing you wrong? Are you willing to have your heart open that much? Oh, man. That would be such an amazing, amazing experience. It goes on to say, and again, we're reading from the book, Reflecting Christ, February 27th, reading. While we were yet unloving and unlovely in character, hateful and hating one another, our Heavenly Father had mercy on us. And as the Bible says, because he so loved us, my friends, we are also ought to love one another. First John 3, verse 16. The children of God are those who are partakers of his nature. It is not earthly rank, nor birth, nor nationality, nor religious privilege, which proves that we are members of the family of God. Friends, no, it's not. It is love. A love that embraces all humanity, even sinners whose hearts are not utterly close to God, will respond to kindness. While they may give hate for hate, they will also give love for love. But it is only the Spirit of God that gives love for hatred and mercy. To be kind to the unthankful and to the evil, to do good hoping for nothing again, is the insignia of the royalty of heaven, a sure token by which the children of the highest reveal the high hate. Doing good, receive. Nothing in return. This is the highest insignia of one again believer in Jesus Christ. I can not say it any better. Friend of mine, in these last few minutes of today's program, I just want to take your mind heavenward. I just want you to be transported to higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord. But you know something, my friend? You know something? Yes. Living in victory does mean that one of the first steps that you take is learning how to forgive those who want you. It is a hard saying. I'm not going to lie. But you know what? The Bible tells us, and I believe it, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And you know how it's possible? Because and I only say this because I know from experience that it is true. The only way that that is possible is that if you learn all of Jesus, because he will lead the way properly now. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. Cross before me, no 
of mine as we get ready to close I want you to understand something God fully knows well that for you to forgive the person who's done and committed against the most heinous act would be one of the hardest things you've ever had to do could you imagine Adam and Eve's relationship with Cain after he cold-bloodedly murdered their baby boy but he was also the AP boy. So somehow they pushed down all that they were feeling to let their son know that as his parents they still loved him. And that scenario would have been repeated throughout history, even in your own experience, beloved. I'm pretty sure you've experienced that you've done something wrong and you had to be forgiven. And by the clear. He who has been forgiven much loves much. And it takes it takes a big person, dear friend. It takes a big person to be willing to forgive. The slightest wrong or the most egregious wrong. Remember the parable that Jesus told of the steward who wasn't willing to forgive a debt 
comparable to a hundred dollars when he owed his king, his lord, much more, much more than that. A friend of mine, let us live in victory every day, knowing that as the song we just heard said, I will follow, I will follow. Jesus has already walked out the way before us. And friend, if this seems a little bit too tough of a medicine to take, Allow him to take the back seat and allow him to actively shine through you to forgive, to live, to love your enemies, to bless them that persecute you, to be good to them that persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father in heaven. Blessed are the peacemakers, that but they shall be called children of God. A friend of mine, yes, Jesus knows exactly how hard it is. And that's why he's promised you friends comparable to the challenge. He says, my peace I leave with you. So friend of mine, once you have that peace, it passes all understanding. And the Bible says, when your ways are pleasing to the Lord, he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Friend of mine, it's hard. We are not going to sugarcoat it. It is hard. But the Bible says, as much as possible, live peaceably with all men. And if you are able to do this, my friend, if you are able to do this, what other area of your life aren't you going to be able to conquer? I thank God and I praise Him for the work that He has been able to do in your life, my life, our life, thus far. Thus far. And as we continue to trust Him, He will continue to work in our prayers. May you continue to live such a life that even if there are people that you call enemies will one day consider themselves your best friend. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you for the life that you call us to live. I pray now, Heavenly Father, that as we seek to take our leave from this platform, that you may just cement the words that were spoken in the ears of your people today and that they will continue to seek after your heart pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Just before I go off the air, my beloved, I just want to encourage you to support the program. The information is there in the description area how you can donate on a one-time basis or a continual basis. May God bless you abundantly and really, really, really good. God bless you. You've been listening to Soul Cafe Radio. Join us next time for powerful messages, music, and more. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.com. Listening 
to you.